So what are you guys? We're part of the Sparkwood family! Hi guys, so the point here is not to run the theory behind Lagrange multipliers, it's just to use the method of Lagrange multipliers uh, to get us an answer. So that's what we're going to do here, okay? So for the exam, what do we need to know? Let's say we're given some function. Uh, y cubed plus y squared plus x squared, okay? Find the global max for the global min, so that's your question. Find the global max and the global min, but not over the entire range for this guy, not the entire xy plane, but on a restricted domain. So let's say given the constraint um, x squared plus y squared equal to 25. So now, of course you can do this using our old method, and you don't have to use Lagrange multipliers. But since the point of this video is how to use Lagrange multipliers in kind of a mellow setting, uh, why don't we do that? Why don't we use, use Lagrange multipliers, okay? So the first setup is you've got to have some function. So there's our function, okay? And then you need that constraint, okay? So here's my advice. Take that constraint and immediately rewrite it so that the right-hand side is zero, okay? So we're going to do that. So x squared plus y squared minus 25 is equal to zero. That's the same equation, okay? All right, so why are we doing so this? Theoretically, what you're doing is you're finding some function g of x, y, and you're defining the constraint to be where this function is equal to zero. So now you can see what we're trying to do here. What we're doing is we're setting it up so we have it equal to zero, and the function of interest is actually this guy. Okay? So I'm going to write this as g of x, y. The other function for our Lagrange multiplier thing, right, is going to be x squared plus y squared minus 25. Okay, that's it. No big deal. Okay. Uh, remember, the actual constraint that was this guy, or this version, or this version, they're all the same thing. What I'm going to do is when we talk about the constraint, I'm going to plug in with that if we need to, okay? But in terms of thinking of the Lagrange multiplier, I'm going to think of this as our generic function. Okay, it's basically you take the gradient of your main function, you take the gradient of the restriction, or the constraint, right? And if you're really allowed to max or min, these guys should just be multiples of one another by some constant factor. So what does that mean? If you have some vector, and the other vector is a multiple of that vector, you're either going to be parallel, or you're possibly going to be what? Anti-parallel, okay? So one of the two, okay, no big deal. Okay, so if you look at the gradient for f, we have the partial of this guy with respect to x is 2x. The partial of this guy with respect to y is uh, 3y squared, 2y. Okay, we want that equal to some constant times the gradient of our constraint. But our constraint here is what? Looking at this guy, our constraint is uh, partial of this guy with respect to x is 2x. Partial of this guy with respect to y is going to be 2y. Uh, and I think we're good, right? And then like usual, we just take this guy piece by piece, component by component. So that top component is going to be 2x is equal to lambda 2x. And the bottom component is going to be 3x squared plus 2y. 3y squared, sorry, plus 2y is equal to lambda 2y. Okay, so let's try to solve and see what we get. So um, over here, I'm going to make an assumption. I'm going to assume here that x is not equal to 0. So maybe we should list that somewhere. Uh, maybe assumption number 1, x is not equal to 0. Because if x is not equal to 0, we can divide everything, right, and get lambda is equal to 1. So this equation becomes 1 is lambda. Okay, then we're going to plug into the bottom equation. And the bottom equation says 3y squared plus 2y is equal to 1 times 2y. And that's pretty because we can subtract 2y from both sides and get 3y squared is equal to 0. And that, of course, implies y is 0. Okay? So that's going to give us y is 0. Okay. All right, so let's summarize what we have here. We have so far that lambda is equal to 1, and we have that y is equal to 0. Okay, that's great, but that tells us nothing about the value up here, right? So we know the y is zero, but we don't know anything about x. And I would see this all the time when I was teaching this. Um, students would get so caught up doing this, and it, it makes sense, right? Because this is where you're doing most of your work, right? That you'd forget about the simple stuff. So you'd forget about the constraint. You have two equations, effectively three unknowns. That's not enough. So to get that third equation, you really have to use that constraint, okay? So let's utilize the constraint, because now the constraint is x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. We know that y is zero. So we have 0 squared plus x squared is 25. Okay, um, so now we have 0 squared plus x squared is 25. We can solve x squared is 25. That means our value here is going to be plus or minus 5. Okay, so what does that give us? That gives us the points x is 5, y is 0, <coughs> or x is negative 5, y is 0. Okay, not too bad, right? But don't forget, we made an assumption. We assume that x is not 0, right? So there's another possibility, and that possibility is, of course, x is 0. 
If x is 0, we go back and rerun this. So if x is 0, the top equation tells us nothing. So this one looks a little confusing because we don't know much about y and we don't know anything about lambda. So it seems like we're kind of stuck. But again, don't forget your constraint equation. So actually, if we're looking at case number 2, all we actually need is the constraint equation. Because if we know if this value is 0, then what we have up here is, using the constraint again, let's try, um, let's see. Chalk is actually chalk usually used for MCAT, but since we have it, why not, right? Let's just use it. So we have uh, x squared plus y squared is 25, okay? Then we have 0 squared plus y squared is 25, right? Using our constraint and using this condition here. And that's going to give us y is, again, plus or minus 5. Okay, so it's sloppy, huh? Okay, uh, so what does, what does that give us? That gives us a pair of points, so it gives us 0, 5. And it gives us 0, negative 5. OK, so this should be it. OK, no big deal. All right, now one more thing. Remember, we're looking for global, a global max or global min, right? right? So if we're looking for global maximum or global minimum, then we find our critical points, right? It's pretty mellow now. We just plug them into the original equation to see who's the biggest and who's the smallest. But you also have to check the endpoints, right? Well, in this case, our function is a circle. So if you look at it, we're pretty clean. We don't really have any endpoints to worry about, OK? If it had been a function that looked like this, let's say like, that, then you would definitely have to check the endpoints. So for the yeah. first point, 5 and 0, that means uh, the y coordinate is 0. So it's 0, 0, so it's going to just be, well, let's just write it. I won't be lazy. OK, so we want to look at this guy. We're going to plug in 5 and 0. So this is 0 cubed plus 0 squared plus 5 squared, which is 25. OK, uh, minus 5 and 0 is going to give us exactly the same thing. Degree 0, 0, and minus 5 squared, which is still 25. OK, so both of these check out. OK, let's try 0 and 5 and 0 and negative 5. OK, so if the first guy is 0, then we have 0 and 5. So 5 cubed plus 5 squared plus 0. So now we're looking at this point. OK, so uh, y value is going to be 5. OK, we plug in. This is 125 plus 25 plus 0. So our z is going to be 150. Wow, that looks way bigger. OK. No big deal. Uh, we're going to try 0 and negative 5. I think this time it's not going to be symmetric, right? Because you get that cube factor in there. So it's going to be negative 5 cubed plus negative 5 squared plus 0 squared is equal to z. Uh, this is going to be negative 125. And this is going to be plus 25. And this is plus 0. And that's equal to z. OK. Let me just clean this up so it's a little bit better. So we got from here, this was 150. OK, and we're finishing this guy down here. So it's negative 125 plus 25, right, uh, is equal to z. So negative 100 is equal to z. So now it's clearly we're looking at the values here, right? The biggest value is going to be 150. That's our global max. Uh, and the smallest value is going to be negative 100. That's our global min. Uh, and the input that's going to give you that is 0, 0,5 and 0, negative 5. So not too bad, right? All right, so for this problem, we're going to clean everything up by just putting it all together, OK? And so what's the problem going to be? You have some function, y cubed, let's say, um, minus x squared plus y squared, OK? Something like this. And we want a subject now to a constraint. But the constraint is going to be x squared plus y squared, uh, let's say, less than or equal to 1. Okay. okay, so what is the question for you? It's the whole shebang. Use any method you want, do it any way you want, but I want all the relative maxes and mins, right? Uh, and we also want the global maximum and the global minimum. Okay, so. okay. I want to visualize this briefly. So this guy, if you look at it, this is definitely the unit circle. So, like this. Uh, and we're looking at less than or equal to one, so it's a unit circle and everything on the inside. So there's our domain. Okay, so what's...